uh, today's lecture will be part four of chapter seven, retaining walls and lateral earth pressure. Uh, so far we have been studying types of retaining walls, uh, everything related to uh, retaining walls, and then we uh, started uh, uh, calculating uh, the earth pressure. We need to calculate the earth pressure to be able to design the wall, and we said that uh, our assumption was based on uh, Rankin's theory for uh, phi soil or C phi soil, but it is not applicable to C soil. Uh, we studied the, how to calculate the crack, the tension crack of the of the soil. We, we, we said what are the points that we should study in, in any case for, uh, for the design of, uh, of a wall. And uh, finally, we took an example and we studied uh, the, the, the effect of the soil on the wall plus the effect on the water. And we said that there are two cases. Either I, for the water, I can take two uh, triangles, one to the right and one to the left, or as here in this case, I would take just the net of the two triangles, the big and the small triangle. In uh, this lecture, we will start to study how to design the wall. Now we, are st we studied how to calculate the loads on the wall, the, but how to use these loads to calculate the wall, what, what we need to study. Uh, always I say that in any geotechnical problem, to solve a problem, I need to assume what will be the failure, what will be the failure shape, what will be the failure cause, and then I study the case of the failure to get numbers, and from these numbers, I would take a factor of safety not to reach this failure case. This is the, the normal procedure for, for the design of any geotechnical problem. So you first have to assume a failure case. Why to assume a failure case? Because actually in soil, simulation of actual soil, 100% is not, is not possible. I cannot simulate exactly what is happening in the soil. So what, what I do, I uh, assume the failure. I say that this will, in this case, I expect that this will be very important and I can ignore this. So I ignore something and I take something into, into consideration and design based on what I take. You will tell me, okay, what about what you have ignored? I'm taking a factor of safety. This factor of safety will cover what I have ignored. So because I cannot design real soil as it is, I have to uh, simplify the case. Simplifying the case means that I will concentrate on few aspects and I will leave one or two aspects I'm not going to consider. They will not cause me any problem because they are minor and in the same time I have a factor of safety, in, as, you, as you have seen, a, a, the factor of safety is sometimes 2.5, 2 3, so uh, yani, uh, I'm taking a very big factor of safety. It can cover these items. So what are we going to check for the case of the uh, 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 retaining wall? And, and we said it is a rigid retaining wall because a flexible retaining wall has a different uh, uh, approach. What we have studied so far is th this, this case, this is a shape of a rigid retaining wall. Uh, to have a flexible one, it means that you, you should study something very slim and very tall so that it, it can move. Anyway, uh, uh, what are the cases that I have to study? I have to study the safety against sliding, the safety against overturning, the safety against bearing capacity failure. What does this mean? Safety against sliding. What is safety against sliding? This is my retaining wall. The soil, as we have seen here, is pushing mainly from one side and the other side is resisting. Here it is pushing, here it is resisting. So what is expected? 
what is expected is that my retaining wall will move like this horizontally. So what is pushing the retaining wall? The loads, the loads that we have just uh, studied here. If I, if I take this problem, this will be pushing, this will be pushing. So the sum of this, this force and the sum of this force is the pushing forces. What will be resisting? This triangle will be resisting. Plus, in case I have some friction on the base, it will also prevent from the sliding. So this is exactly what we, what we are going to say. Uh, F resisting, this is the equation of F resisting. The F resisting, the friction between any two sides, as we said before in, in many chapters, to calculate the friction, the friction depends on the horizontal load on top. If I have high horizontal load, I will have high friction. You remember the photo of the boy who is pulling his sister and her dog on top of a raft? We said that if the raft was empty, it will be very easy to pull. If they are on board, then it will be very difficult to pull. So there is a friction, and this friction is affected by the vertical force. What is the vertical force acting on any body? It is the weight coming minus the uplift in case there is uplift, in case there is water pushing up, then the effective force will be the difference between the weight minus the, uh, the uplift multiplied by 10 delta. What is delta? Delta is something called the coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction is something related to phi of the soil. If I have a phi, a phi soil, then I can take delta equal 0.75 phi. So I have phi, then phi multiplied by 0.75, I get delta. Delta is the coefficient of friction. What is the difference between phi and delta? They are both friction. Phi is the coefficient of internal friction. Internal friction between what? Suppose I'm studying sand, so it will be the friction between sand and sand. The internal friction inside the sand. But I want, I don't want this now, I want the friction between sand and whatever is below it, or whatever is above it, which is the foundation. I have sand below, but I have footing on top. So I need the friction between the foundation, which is made of concrete, and the soil. This I can calculate by, uh, 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 delta will be 0.75. So I can get delta, 10 delta, multiplied by the vertical wall, uh, the vertical weight, effective vertical weight, which is uh, minus the, the, the effect of water, I will get the frictional force due to phi. So this term so far is the frictional, fo uh, uh, frictional forces due to phi. But I may have sea soil. Also, it, it may be sea, phi soil. So the effect of C is this directly. C multiply by B. Uh, B is the, the width of the footing. So if, if, if this is B, from here to here it is B, then I get the C of the soil multiplied by B, and then I will get B. So this full term is the effect of C plus the effect of phi. Very, very easy. But here they, they said that we are going to take CA, which is 0.75C. Sometimes we use this, sometimes we, 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 we use this, but it, it, it is uh, okay, uh, uh, depending on, the, on your uh, problem. Uh, the safety factor is uh, calculated. How can I calculate the, fa uh, the safety factor? These are the resisting forces. And I already know that the, the driving forces, these are the driving forces. But as, as, you, as you have seen now, uh, uh, what we calculated is mainly the friction here. 
but they may be a, a triangle here for the passive forces, similar to this one. What about this triangle? Sometimes we ignore this triangle. Why we ignore this triangle? To add more safety, but it is not really, I already have a factor of safety. Why to add safety? If, if, this is something very important that we say. If I have to design a wall and the factor of safety is three, don't add other factors. It's enough, three is enough. Adding more means you are paying more for nothing. But here there is a case of loading that requires this. What is this case of loading? This is your wall, this is the high land, and this is the low land. Suppose they want to drill a trench to lay a pipe. What will happen? They are going to drill here. This, the depth of the, uh, of the drilling will be something like 1.5 to 2 meters to lay a pipe. It means that you don't have you don't have this triangle. You don't have soil. At, uh, uh, they have already drilled in front of people who are going to drill here or excavate this trench. They don't have any idea about your design and you are using this. <coughs> and you are using this as a triangle for the pa passive. They, they don't know anything about the passive and the active and how the soil acts. They only concentrate on laying their pipe and going home. So they are going to drill from the start of the wall till the end of the wall a big trench, and then they will bring their pipe and put it inside. Maybe after drilling, the wall will collapse on them because they don't know what... Uh, you were depending on this passive. So to depend on this passive, I have to be sure that there will be no drilling inside here. But if I expect in the future that there may be people excavating this part of the, uh, uh, of the soil to lay any future pipe or cable or whatever, then I should not take this triangle into consideration. Never. So, so, so that's why this triangle may be there or may not be there. That's why in some problems you find that in the problem, we say, do not consider the passive, or no, consider the passive. It depends on my case. Uh, 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 am I expecting drilling here or not? Not, drill, uh, not expecting? Okay, so, so, so fine. Anyway, so the, the, uh, the driving force will be the sum of this plus the sum of this minus this, in case I am sure that I will have it. <coughs> if, I'm, if there is a possibility that it may be vanished uh, in the future, <coughs> then I should not take it into consideration. So returning back, what is my factor of safety? My factor of safety is F resisting. It will be either this only, which is uh, 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 the, the, the friction and the cohesion between the, the footing and the soil, or may, I may add to it the, uh, the, the, the passive, depending on my case. But what, what is my uh, driving? My driving is all the triangles that are in this side. <coughs> so this is the first case. The first case of failure. This is my first assumption for failure. The first assumption is sliding. There is another case. So the second uh, assumption for failure is overturning. The, the, the footing may not, it, it may be safe in uh, uh, sliding. It will not slide. But because it is tall, it may rotate in place, like this. This, this. this is my footing. It did not slide. But it rotated. It overturned, and here was my point of rotation. So my footing was 
shift. So how to check this? In this case, we checked forces, pushing forces or driving forces against resisting forces. In this case, I'm speaking about overturning. So I'm speaking about moments. I will not compare forces, I will compare moments. I will take the forces, multiply it by the arm of each force to get moments. I have some uh, driving forces. When I multiply it by the arm, I will get driving moments. And in the same time, I have some resisting forces. When I multiply it by their corresponding arms, I will get the resisting moments. I will divide both by each other, then I will get the factor of safety. So this will be called the factor of safety against overturning. It is different. Yani I may solve this problem to get here a factor of safety of 1.5. And then when I check overturning, I find that it is only 0.9. So it is unsafe. Depending on the dimensions of the wall. Of course, if you have a long wall with a small base, uh, with a big base, that, so a long wall means that the possibility of overturning is more. But if I have big base or small base, then the possibility of the sliding. So what depends, what, what uh, yani, uh, 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 governs the sliding is the base. But what governs the overturning is the height. The more the height, the more the possibility of overturning. Yani suppose this wall, I design it to be safe in uh, sliding. And then something happened and I changed the dimensions to be a little bit higher. Then I will have to check it again for sliding because the, 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 the pushing forces or the driving forces will increase. But what will be more is the effect of overturning. Do anyone know why? Uh, yes, for overturning. Why the length of the wall is, is more governing in case of overturning. Just, just because in, in forces we are dealing with the length. If I want to calculate the force here, this is the force. The force here is uh, uh, the area of this triangle. So I'm dealing with this dimension as the length. But in case of overturning, you remember, this is similar to a cantilever. What is the effect of the cantilever? What is the moment of the cantilever? WL squared. So L will be uh, uh, doubled. How it will be doubled in my case? L will interfere in the area because the area of this shape is affected by L. If you increase the L, then the area of the, uh, of the shape will increase. But you, you again multiply it by the arm, and the arm is affected by L. So L will affect the area of the force and will affect the arm of the force. So the effect of L on the overturning is higher than the effect of it on the slide. So uh, yani, this is just for sense, yani, to sense what, what your forces. So uh, uh, factor of safety. M resisting, what, in, in a problem like this, think with me. Uh, of course, what is causing uh, driving, what, what is pushing the wall, it is this. The, this triangle, they are pushing the wall. This triangle here is pushing the wall. This triangle here is pushing the wall. So this, 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 and this will cause driving moment. But what can cause resisting moment in my case here? The smaller triangle, but it will be a, a little bit small. Why? If, if it exists, because as we said now, we may, I will tell you, ignore the passive, so you don't have passive. But suppose you have a passive, of course it will be a big force, but the arm is very, very small, because the arm will be, this is the, the turning point, and suppose you have a, a triangle here, then this will be the arm. It's nothing. The main contribution is what? Pardon? The soil, the weight of the soil. Here, you have soil here on top of the wall. 
This soil is acting down and it wants to stabilize the wall. It wants to take the wall back. The soil, he, all of the soil here is pushing the wall. But the soil on top of the leg of the wall is pushing it down. So, yani, the, the horizontal force of the soil is pushing it to, to, to turn, to overturn, to be overturned. But the vertical own weight of this portion, which is behind the wall or on top of the leg of the wall, is pushing it down. That's why if you increase the length of the leg of this portion, if you increase the other side, it, it may have some effect. But if you increase this side, it means that the area of the soil on top of the wall will resist. So, 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 so the soil here contributes two times. One time to, to drive the, the, the wall to overturn due to the horizontal effect. And the second time is the own weight. It will drive the wall down to stabilize it back. Third thing, uh, yeah. So, so, so this is uh, uh, what what we what we were saying. Uh, this is about uh, how, how overturning uh, happens. Overturning may be around this point, may be around this this point. It depends which is my critical case, depending on the uh, dimensions of uh, uh, of my uh, wall. Uh, yani here sometimes we may check not just overturning but just rotating around a point. Maybe the forces from below is higher than the forces from above so the, the wall itself may rotate. Sometimes you find a retaining wall and below this retaining wall you find that the soil started to to be ejected outside of the wall, at the below of the wall. Why? Because there is some kind of overturning and the forces here are very high, so they are as if they are coming from below uh, the wall. Anyway, this is not my uh, 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 main case. My main case is what I uh, j just said. We, we will take example to, to, to show you this how to calculate the driving and resisting uh, moments on my wall. But anyway, this will be a problem, a structural problem. You are going to put some loads uh, in the front, some loads in the behind, and then you are going to try to assume which is your turning point. Is it this point? Is it a point inside? Is it the, the, the uh, here? You, 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 don't, you don't know. So you presume a point and check the moments. And maybe presume another point and check the moments. And, the, and you will take the critical into consideration. That's why when you have the sense, the engineering sense, and you can decide which is the critical case, it saves you some time not to uh, uh, perform lots of checks. And, uh, here, uh, this is the check against bearing capacity. Oh, yes, this was the check against bearing capacity. Uh, you remember shallow foundations? Todd. The third uh, check that we need to, to check is the check of bearing capacity. Uh, if you remember that in shallow foundation, we were checking bearing capacity. This is a foundation. This part of the wall is really a foundation. So it may settle. So there should be a method that I should present to check the effect of bearing capacity. But before we go deeper into this method, because this method is a little bit complicated, usually the check of bearing capacity is not that important. What is important is the check of sliding, and then the check of overturning. These are, uh, sliding is the first one, uh, overturning is the second one, second possible one. Uh, bearing capacity is the least possible one. Why? 
You remember when we were calculating the bearing capacity of shallow foundation, we were speaking about a settlement of 2 centimeters, 2.5 centimeters. What happens if I have a retaining wall and it settles down 5 centimeters? Nothing. It is not a case of a building with equipments, elevators, and any tilt or any movement will affect the wall. Or will affect the building. This is just a wall. This is a wall carrying a soil. That's all. So, in most cases, the effect of bearing capacity is nothing. And you perform a lot of calculations to get that you have a settlement of five centimeters. Okay, why? What's the problem? Five centimeters. It will settle five centimeters. Okay, when I construct it, I will construct it five centimeters higher, and that's all. I, I, I'm not going to do anything. So, in the effect of bearing capacity, we have to be picky when to perform it and when not to perform it, because I will be exerting a lot of effort, and in the same time, I will not be gaining a lot. So uh, uh, I have to, to decide first, is it a critical case for bearing capacity failure or not? If not, then uh, you remember even in bearing capacity, we said that the equations for bearing capacity, uh, we usually compare it to the settlement of the footing. This, this is more important to me than the bearing capacity itself. So anyway, uh, uh, to check uh, the bearing capacity, maybe you have a footing here. Do you remember from the bearing capacity equations, we, uh, uh, normal force affects the bearing capacity. Moment affects the bearing capacity. So I need to check in this equation what is the effect of the, mo uh, of the vertical forces and the moments on the base of this as if it is a shallow foundation. So I need to, to get the forces. To get the forces, I have here F1 and F2. You remember, in case of shallow foundations with moment, we said that the, the stress below the footing will not be constant, will not be uniform. There will be, due to the effect of the moment, the stress at one point will be higher than the, the, than the, the, than the average, and at the other end, it will be less than the average. You remember this, or I bring you the slide? Yes, from the from the uh, bearing capacity uh, for a case uh, of uh, footing with moment, yani normal force plus moment. This is the equation. Uh, N divided by, by A multiplied by one minus six E over B. N over A, uh, normal force divided by area, this is the effect of the vertical force. Then N by A multiplied by this, this is the effect of the moment. In some cases it will be with negative, and in some cases it will be with positive, positive uh, sign. It means that F1 and F2, F1 is higher and F2 will be lower depending on the direction of the moment. What is the eccentricity E that I'm using here? It is M divided by N. Example, example will, will show us, yani, uh, as I said, uh, it was a little bit elaborated, so that when we come to, to our examples, we, we, we can understand what we are doing. This is of course, this is a reinforced uh, concrete wall because it is very slim, uh, 0.5 centimeter. Compared to this one, this, this is bulky retaining wall. But this is a very slim retaining wall, so يعني, it is uh, reinforced concrete. So this is concrete, this is concrete. Here I have some soil on top of, uh, uh, of my wall. Uh, you, you remember that we said that in, in solving walls with uh, uh, our equation, we need vertical wall, or vertical sides of the wall. Here is a vertical side, vertical smooth side. So this is a vertical side. And I will assume here that this is also the vertical side of my wall. And this is part of my wall. 
this part of soil is part of, of, of my wall. Here I have a triangle for passive. Here I have a triangle for active. But here I have a dotted triangle. It means without looking at my uh, uh, data, I should have C. Because how come I will have a negative force here unless I have C? You remember from last lecture that in the equation for the horizontal effect of, uh, of, uh, uh, of C and phi, in case of C, I have negative. So uh, uh, at this point, the effect of phi is zero. Why? Because the vertical force on top is zero. So it is mainly C that is affecting. So here I will have a negative force, but at a certain point I will have zero, which this, is, this will be the depth of the edge crack, the height of the crack, and then the, the triangle will be, uh, uh, will change to be positive triangle and it will cause, it will be a driving triangle. Of course, this dotted triangle will not be considered because it means that, or it says that, the soil is pulling the wall, and by no means the soil will pull the wall. The soil will just leave the wall away, and it will be separated from the wall. So from here to there, I don't have any forces. From this point down, I have a driving uh, force. So here they tell us, for the shown RC wall, shown in the figure, angle of friction between, take, take into consideration, angle of friction between the footing and the soil is 60. Is this phi or what? He's telling me angle of friction between the footing and the soil. Delta. You remember, you, you remember we said that there are two types of coefficients of friction. Phi, which is the internal friction, angle of internal friction, internal inside the material itself. So in sand, it will be the friction between the sand particles. But if I want to calculate the friction between sand and concrete, then I need to calculate another angle, which is the angle of uh, uh, friction between the, 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 these two materials, we said we have to calculate first uh, delta. W what is delta? It was, it, it may be assumed many cases, but uh, in, in our case, we take it 0.755. So it means that this 16 is not phi because I, I already have here phi. This is phi. But here, he did not give me, yani, if he did not give me anything, I can c calculate this. But he did not tell me what is the type of the soil beneath the wall. He gave me phi. This phi extends from here to there. But what is the type of soil here? I don't know. He did not give me. Yani imagine that these are two layers. The, or they may be two layers. The first layer I know for sure phi is 25. But in this layer, he did not give me a phi, but he just gave me the, uh, directly the delta, which is 0.75 the phi. So it, it is 60. Density of RC is 2.5. Calculate the factor of safety. Again, it's sliding using ranking theory for the following cases. First one neglecting the passive, the other is taking the effect of the passive. Why? Because I, this is very shallow. Uh, 0.5 plus 0.6, it's 1.1. Just 1.1 meter. This 1.1 meter can be easily removed. Any, any excavation will remove this 1.1 meter and I will lose all, the, all my passive. So I only can depend on the friction between the wall and the bottom of the wall and the soil here. The soil here, I don't know anything about it, except that I have a, a, a phi of, a, a delta of 60. He did not give me C, or he gave me, I don't know, I, I, I will check. In case he gave me a C, I can take it into consideration. I don't have a C, it means that it is just a, a phi soil. 
we'll, we'll see in this. Uh, uh, of course, in an exam, it will be very clear uh, what is the, the, where is the start of the layer, where is the end of the layer, what are the parameters you have for each layer. Uh, we'll start calculating the lateral earth pressure. What is the lateral earth pressure? What, what, uh, what are my equation? K active is 1 minus sine phi divided by 1 plus sine phi. Phi is 25. I will substitute. This is 0 0.41. So this is K active. What is K passive? K passive is 1 over K active. So it is 2.64. Uh, 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 as, as I told you before, just check the value of K active compared to K passive. Here it is 0 0.4. Here it is 2.46. It's many times more than, some, it is something like six times more than the, uh, uh, the, the K active. It, it is a very big. Why? We said an example here that you have to remember. When you are resisting, when you are in your land and resisting, you are very strong. When you are invading, you are weaker. The, the, always people who are uh, 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 resisting and staying at their land, they are very strong. So K passive is the part of the soil that is in place. It did not move, but the wall want to occupy part of its land. So it is very strong in resisting. But the other active, they, the, the, the active force, because it is higher, so it wants to occupy more land. So in this case, it does not have any justification. So that's why it, it, it is weaker. It's just for comparison and for remembering. Uh, it has nothing, nothing to do with geotechnical. Uh, just something to, to, to remember why we have very high forces for passive. Yani you may have a small triangle, and this small triangle have very big force. And you have a bigger triangle in the other side and it have a small force. Why? Because the K is different. Okay, so now uh, we have uh, uh, to, to calculate, now we, we need to calculate these. So I have to calculate at point one. What, what do I have at point one? This is my equation. You remember we said that in this equation we have a negative sign for the C and a positive sign for the phi. And the phi is included indirectly in this equation. Where, it, where, where is phi in this, in this part of the equation? K active uh, multiplied by sigma vertical. Sigma vertical is gamma h. It's, it's, it has nothing to do with phi, but, but k active is phi, because k, k active is one minus sine phi divided by one plus sine phi. So here, I have the effect of phi. Here, I have directly the effect of c. C is included in my uh, equation, and it is negative. Okay, what is the value of sigma vertical at point one? At this point, what is the sigma vertical? Zero, so this term is zero. Here. I have C, a value of C, so I will have a negative force. So starting at point one, I will have a negative force. This is point one. I go to point two. What is the difference between point one and point two? Gamma H has increased. The vertical force has increased. So I will now, instead of multiplying K active by zero, I will multiply K active by a very big number and I will subtract from it the same number here for the C. So I will have a number here. So above I have minus, minus 1.9, below I have plus 2. Here minus 2.9, uh, minus 1.9, here plus 2. I will just take a line between this one point and this point, then I will have a dotted triangle above. To calculate the area of this triangle, I, know I need to calculate this height or this height. This is H crack uh, that, that we said. Calculate it by anything you want. Drawing, uh, drawing and measuring, equations, trigonometry, whatever you want, calculate this, uh, this uh, length. So this length happened to be 2.51 and I have the full length. 
then I can calculate the remaining and I can get the area of this triangle. If I want to calculate this E, the, this force that is called E, what is, what is this force? The force is the area of the triangle. What is the area of the triangle? This value is 2 or 2.05. I have already calculated it now here. This is 2.05. So this is this value. And the height of the triangle, I know it because I know the full height minus H crack. So now I have the height and I have, the, I have this dimension. I have this dimension. The area is half multiplied by the two dimensions. So this will be the force E. This is E active. This is the active force that is pushing my wall. I can do the same for the passive. Let's calculate the passive and then see, uh, or, or, uh, see if we are going to use it or not because we have two cases, one using the passive and one ignoring the passive. So for the passive, I, I have a different equation. What is the difference between the equation of the passive and the equation of the active? The difference is in the sign, only the sign. Here it is negative, here it is positive. So it means that here I have a negative value because I have two terms. If one term is small, then the negative will, uh, uh, will be more. But in the other side, I have all positive. So it will be the sum of C plus phi. So it, 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 here at point three, the start will be a value and the end will be a higher value. Why it is higher? The, the effect of C will not change, but the effect of phi will be changed according to the increase of the depth. This is, uh, this is what my equation say. My equation say that the effect of C is 2C root K passive. It's a constant number. In, 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 in this equation, at any point, it will be the same. But here, K passive, K, K passive multiplied by sigma uh, vertical, sigma vertical at the, at, the, at the top is not sigma vertical at the bottom. Of course, there is a difference, there is another difference between this equation and this equation. We said that it is only the, 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 the sign. No, it's not the sign only. It's here I'm using K active and here I'm using K passive. It's completely different uh, thing, but I, I mean, uh, it's the same equation in the sense of active and passive, but there is a difference in the, a, a sign, which is this sign. Of course, as we said, K passive may be six times or more than K active. So I expect here big number to, to, to uh, it will be acting. Anyway, this is uh, at point three and point four. And this is point three. I have a value. It came to be 4.71. At point four, I have a value. It came to be 9.8. Compare this to here, here is 2, here is 9.8, approximately 10. So it is more. Why? Because K passive is much more than K active. Now I have all the numbers with me. I have this point, the stress at this point, the stress at this point, I have the stress at this point, I have the stress at this point, I have H crack. Uh, uh, no, he, here is the calculation for H crack. H crack, you can calculate it here in, in this case by using uh, a sim simile of uh, t triangles to get the, the, the value of H crack. It will be 2.51. You have here a triangle and you have here a triangle. You know this length, you know this length. You know the summation of these two. So if you assume one of them x, then the other will be the total length minus x. And you, you just make a comparison of the two triangles to, to, to get the value of x. Uh, then I can calculate, I, I can now go to the, the, the next point. I, I said it very quickly before, how to calculate the forces. How many forces do I have here? Let's see. I need vertical forces and I need horizontal forces. Of course, in this problem, I don't have water. You will find that in each problem, I'm concentrating on something. In the uh, uh, previous problem, we, we, uh, uh, he, he, here, uh, uh, let's just see. Yes, in, the, in, in this problem, we have water. 
but we, we, it was only water. We have uh, one type of soil. Now I have uh, uh, different types of soil. There is a layer above and layer below. I have C in the other problem. I did not have C, but here I don't have water. I don't want to complicate all of the problems. Just concentrate each time on something. So here, uh, I need to calculate where is the uh, here, starting from here. I need to calculate what are the values of the forces, vertical and horizontal. What are these? We said that. What about this triangle? What is the force of this triangle? Zero, because we said that this triangle represent a tensile force, and I'm not going to have a tensile force. The soil will not go to pull the wall, so it is zero. So I, I neglect this, but starting from here to the bottom, I have a force. What is the value of this force? It's the area of the triangle. The area of the triangle is this length multiplied by this stress multiplied by half. So this is the first force. So this one here, let, let's see how, how to calculate it. Uh, e2, earth pressure at 2, half multiplied by 1.1, multiplied by uh, two point, uh, 9.8. Let, let, let's just check the, the numbers first. So we, we said that uh, uh, E active, is the area of this triangle. So this is the first driving force that I have. There are two other resisting forces, which is the area of this square or rectangle and the area of this triangle. So I have to calculate each one alone. If you can calculate it in one time, calculate the area of a trapezium, it's, it's okay. But it is easier to deal with a, a, a triangle and a rectangle. So I will just take this. What is the value of this side? It is 4.71. What is the height? It is 1.1 because it is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.6. So this is the area. I multiply 4.71 multiplied by 1.1, uh, 1. I will get the value of the force EP1. I need to calculate EP2. It's the area of a triangle. What is, the, 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 what is this length? This length is 9.8 uh, minus uh, 4.71. I need the, only this portion of the stress. So what is this portion of the stress? It is the total stress at this point minus the stress here on the top. It's okay. Yeah. So it will be 9.85 minus 4.71. This will give me this length. I also multiply it by 1.1, but I will multiply it by another half because this is a triangle, not a square. In, in the previous force, it was a square or a rectangle, so it's just two, two lengths by each other. But here, it is this length by this length, multiplied by half because it is a uh, triangle. So now I get this area to be this EP2. So now I have EP1, EP2, and E active, because I only have one triangle. Suppose you have many triangles, then you will have EP1, EP, uh, I mean EA1, EA2, and so on. But here I only have one triangle, so I, I called it E active. It's only one triangle for active. This is the effect of the soil. What is the effect of the own weight? I have here many own weights. I have the own weight of this portion of concrete, reinforced concrete. I have this portion of reinforced concrete. I have this soil that I said it will be part of my wall because it is above the wall. It is part of my wall. So what will be the difference? The difference is that I will multiply this area with the unit weight of soil, but I will multiply all of the, uh, these two areas with the unit weight of reinforced concrete. 
So uh, very easy. I'm, we're not going to say it. What is the the, the, the the weight of W1? The area of W1 multiplied by the uh, unit weight of concrete. Here the area of W3 multiplied by the unit weight of soil and so on for this W2. So I now have these three W's. What are we going to check? Let's go back to the, the to the uh, uh, to our problem. Uh, calculate the factor of safety again is sliding. I'm here only checking sliding. I'm not checking overturning. If I was going to check overturning, then I will study moments. But because I'm going to study uh, uh, sliding, I have only forces. So I now have, I will take all the forces into consideration, all the horizontal forces. But why did I calculate the vertical forces if I'm studying uh, sliding? Yes, because the effect, we said that the effect, the friction between the wall and the, the below soil depends on the weight on top. So, uh, uh, all of this was the, 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 the effect of the, the, the lateral earth pressure. Then we'll go to for, for the weights. I will calculate the sum of all the weights. This plus this plus this. It, it ends up having a weight of 13.7. And then I'm going to use the equation for calculating the uh, friction between the wall and the B, uh, and, and, and the soil below the wall. We said that this depends on two things, uh, on the friction and on the phi. But you remember that we said in this example uh, uh, that he did not give me a phi below. He just gave me uh, a delta. So this delta I can use for the friction. But do I have a C below or not? It was not mentioned. So in case it is mentioned directly that here C is zero, then you are going to neglect the C. But if they said that C is the same as the previous layer, then I will take the same number or I will use a different number if it was given. So it depends on what is given on in my uh, uh, problem. So I will calculate here the, 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 the summation of uh, uh, the, the, the forces. Then I will go to the, I have two cases. One case tell me neglect the effect of passive and the one tell me take the effect of passive. I will go to the neglecting the effect of passive first. I don't have passive. So these, I don't have. What are the driving forces here? E active is the only driving force. What is the resisting force? It's just the friction between the wall and the soil. I don't have any passive. So, what are the, the, the driving forces? It is all of the vertical forces. We said that the sum of the vertical forces was 13.73. This is the sum of the vertical forces. So, the sum of the vertical forces multiplied by 1016, which is the, the, the value of delta that was given to me in this problem, I will just multiply them together to get a force. So it is 3.9. What about the active? The active is this E active. E active was 2.65. So what is the factor of safety? The factor of safety is 3.9 divided by 2.6. It is 1.49. So this is the factor of safety against sliding in case of ignoring the passive. Let's go to the case of having passive. What will happen? What will happen is that I will add these two in my equation. I will add this force and this force in my equation. So uh, uh, F resisting will be this force plus this force plus the frictional forces that we have calculated before. That, that, this is the only difference. I will just add them in my uh, uh, equation. That's why in this case we get 1.49 as a factor of safety. In this case, I have 4.5 as a factor of safety because I added two big forces, which is EP1 and EP2. Uh, we, we'll stop at this uh, uh, 
example and uh, next time we'll take uh, another uh, di different type of uh, uh, example thank you and see you next time